Hello, welcome back. I am the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12, and this is Curse of Strahd. Um, building video. We've not done one for a little while because obviously we got very distracted by all of the awesomeness around automation, um, which took up you know quite a lot of my time trying to get that working. And we still got a fair bit of work to do on that. There's lots of other little add-ons and stuff that we may want to use as part of the automation. And of course, Chris's pre-made stuff is still churning out um, which is brilliant and we've still got to check all those items and make sure we're happy with the ones that work but in this video uh, what have we done well apart from the fact that we had a massive issue with we what's we i had a massive issue with recording and it only recorded very very weirdly with very duff sound um in the video that i have recorded already so this is one of those little uh, kind of catch up to let you know what we've done rather than you watch me build sorry about that that's the way it is so since the last video that actually went, um, we did the Fastani camp, but I've now populated that with the, we've got a whole bunch of horses and things in here. I've put the lights in and the people in round the campfires. Um, we've got our key NPCs in here as well. So they're all ready to go. Now, if you recall, this is all about visiting the Fastani camp um, with bringing a present for, is it Arab, Arabelle? I think it's Arabelle. Um, but she's gone missing so what we end up doing is having a conversation there and then we head down to Casimir at the foot of the hill to go see the dusk elves so I created this scene here and we've got our we've got our dusk elves in and now as well I'm quite happy with those little portraits they all look they're all different but they all look very similar which is nice um, and then in theory you know we get a clue from there and off we go with the ring to the Burgomaster's mansion that we had already built previously I've not done the NPCs for this and then following this they need to go off to the tower which is on the um, the banks of Lake Baratok um, and in order to do so to find the way there it's suggested that they speak to the two hunters that they've already met in the inn um whatever the name of the inn is forgotten um in town or they can go and find them so the scene i created without you guys here um is two scenes here let me let me move this tile for a moment get chuck you over there it's not going to want me to do that so what i've done is i've created a uh, just a big image for this one of the lake so this is the shores of lake zarovich um, and I wanted it to look nice as in yeah yeah it's misty but I wanted to show the players that while this place is dark and it's dingy and it's full of people suffering and it's generally quite miserable under the yoke of Strahd himself the country is actually beautiful um, and give them these glimpses of this beautiful landscape and what it could be um, when it's freed from under Strahd's uh, control. So uh, I've just popped a tile over this because as they had head along the banks um, to get to the hunter's cabin. Now you can't see this particularly well. Um, there we go. So again, it's just another scene, lake in the background with the hunter's cabin. I want them focusing on the scenery because this is kind of a role play scene. Now this is a tile, obviously. <laughs> obviously um so i have put a couple of bits on here so first of all it's got um i've put this in as a uh i know i didn't put any actions on this one i didn't bother putting any actions on this one uh because this is merely going to be let me lock it in place this is merely going to be a hidden tile so the players they're going to come along they're going to see the lake and things like that they might stop and paddle their feet whatever they're going to do and they're going to head along the shore and as they head along the shore i'm just going to unhide this tile and describe as they approach the hut and the depending what time of the day it is whether the hunters are there or not so that's really easy i don't need to use buttons and triggers just to unhide one tile so when they leave here with directions, they're going to head back to the Svalich Road, um, which obviously, you know, this is the west, out, out of Valaki to the west rather than out to the east, but it's still the Svalich Road. Uh, and that will take them to their next scene that will start off looking like this, um, where they are crossing the, so it's the Luna River crossing, and they've got this old bridge to cross. There's a clue that they can find here 
if they happen to find it if they bother to pick it up um that's all part of this scene um and then they get to the crossroads so rather than having two scenes i've got a tile on here and let me just show you what my what actions i've got on this tile i've put two images on here one of them is my invisible png background uh, blank card tile image and the other one is the one that you can see the river luna one so it starts off with the river luna uh, and i've got a couple of actions on here is switch the tile and deactivate the tile and the setup is simply when the game master double clicks on this tile it will switch to the transparent tile and deactivate this tile as well so when i as the dm if i double click on this that tile disappears and leaves me with the uh, the crossroads here and the party will come in from this corner now the bit you didn't see was me creating the monsters so uh, we've got four twig blights here um, and I had to have a delve and it took me a while to fight because poor organization these are the same images I used for twig blights when we did the Fandelver campaign um, and they go to Thunder Tree and there's some twig blights there uh, and also we've got some scarecrows now somebody is watching this video going hey I recognize that um, so these images for the scarecrow let me bring up the um, if I can remember my alphabet there you are so we've got this image that I've used for the token um, but we've also got uh, this image for the portrait uh, Drazimo did these so Drazimo was pulling these together for his own purposes and shared them with me and I told him I was stealing them <laughs> and uh, he uh, he said that was fine so I've nicked his images for this and I particularly like um, the version with the glowing eyes um, but I want both versions because it might well be that they encounter these scarecrows other places where they are just standing there looking normal and then their eyes start to glow and they move so we can use things like token flip if we wanted to to switch between the two images uh, i'm going straight for these being hostile now scarecrows are not in the current srd um, under your monsters so you either need to bring them in using the ddbi uh, uh, importer so bringing it in from D, D beyond assuming you have that resource there is just so you're aware at the time of this video because of the 2024 release DD &D beyond itself is updating a whole bunch of stuff a whole bunch of items and things ready for the 2024 um, changeover so if you munch things you're bringing in 2024 stuff not 2014 stuff so there is a there's a crossover and that has got nothing to do with um, Mr. Primate, who is the modder for DDBI. Um, it's just they've stuffed him on the back end. But be very careful importing at the moment while D&D &D Beyond sort themselves out. Uh, everybody's complained and they are trying to roll that back. So you should be able to import your 2014 stuff, your current 5th edition stuff properly um or choose to bring in the 2024 new stuff but at the moment right at this video it's a mess so i'm not touching ddb importer right now um, until they've sorted themselves out um so what i've used is this import uh, so 5e stat block importer now if you're wondering what that is you can absolutely go and look in the playlists uh, the playlist videos for um, the add-ons and it's in there but essentially what we do is if we've got the stat block we paste it into there and then we watch this magically rearrange this into a stat block tell it where we want to import click import and i've done that with the twig blights and the scarecrows to bring them in and then of course i've just added my images in now do double check it, it's really really good but do double check things like your damage and stuff is brought in correctly your immunities and things like that check it's done it the way you want to um, and of course you might choose to update them edit them or whatever um, to make things a bit more interesting for your party now i did have a bit of a discussion about you know using these things and of course none of it recorded i've chosen to put this lot up here 
because my party for Curse of Strahd consists of quite a few spellcasters. So they're going to be wanting they're going to be wanting to fight at range. Now don't worry, there's going to be plenty of opportunities that they're going to be robbed of their range abilities. But I thought this is a big open space. I'm going to have the creatures coming in from a bit of a distance so they get a real good chance to let loose with all of their range stuff um, and mow them down before they get to the party. Now, I don't want that to be, you know, there's no melee here, um, but I do want them to get the feeling of just chopping these things down. There's only four twig blights, which are really weak. Uh, the scarecrows, as is, are, yeah, they're weak as well. Um, so th there's, it's not really a particularly challenging fight, this one, or at least it's not supposed to be. The scarecrows are challenge rating one, um, and there's only two of them, uh, and the twig blights are one eighth. They're worth 25 XP each. So it's really going to be easy for the party. So what I did say is, yeah, I'm going to throw these at them. But I am possibly, depending how the combat goes, just going to throw in some more on the fly that will come out of the bushes here. So, yeah, you're mowing those down. But actually now some more come out. Um, because as a DM, and guys, you probably know this already, our job is to make it fun for the players. Sometimes that is throwing monsters at the party and they can just mow them down. Um, sometimes that's fun. Sometimes a scary, really dangerous boss fight is fun where there is a real risk they might die. But you can't use those two extremes all of the time. You re and you really shouldn't because if every fight's a walkover, that's boring. If every fight is a fight to the death, that's actually, it loses a lot of that kind of terror that should come with those big boss fights. So things should be in the middle somewhere, you know, slightly difficult, slightly easy, a little bit, you know, you want them to actually care about the fight. Um, I'm suspecting they're going to mow these down quite easily and this is going to be a really, really easy fight. I want them to, yeah, hack through the twig blights, absolutely, but I want them to find those scarecrows actually scary. Um, so I am fully prepared that they will start mowing them down and then I will be chucking others that are going to come out of the trees over this side possibly even from behind them if they move up um, just to suddenly make them go uh oh we got a bit complacent um, because I want them on their toes a bit now one of the abilities of these scarecrows is they have this terrifying gaze so um, it says the scarecrow targets one creature that it can see within 30 feet of it. If the target can see the scarecrow, the target must succeed on a DC 11 wisdom saving throw or be magically frightened until the end of the scarecrow's next turn. Now, I just clicked on that. Uh, so it's popped up in here. There's no automation on that whatsoever um, because it's just come in. Uh, and if I do um, Medikit, there is no automation available. So that's one of those things. It's like, yeah, you can just say, oh, yeah, it uses it. You know, give me a give me a check. Absolutely, you can do that. And especially if you're using um, like things like Epic Rolls you want to use. Um, or uh, if I can remember how to do it, request a roll. We can use the Monk's Token Bar to say, actually, I want, you know, we can pop it in here and we can request a roll from the player. I've got the Scarecrow selected at the moment. Obviously, I don't want that. So we, there's a number of ways that we can do that without automating it. But uh, that might be nice to be something we look at to automate. So, uh, yeah, apologies you kind of missed what was going on in this scene. I do need to make sure I reset this back to how it should be. So I'm going to put that back to image one and make sure this tile is active again. There we go. And my tile is my tile is off. No, how bizarre. Thank you. Uh, right, so I want to lock that in place and leave that tile visible. Um, so, uh, so yeah, sorry you missed about actually the building of that. But um, the idea is, is that, uh, yeah, this is just a small encounter on the way past. You'll notice those icons are hidden so they won't see them as they come through here. Not at all. Is my... token yeah i've accidentally resized it 
<laughs> there we go that's better make sure that's actually covering up i wonder why the mist wasn't you know there was a bit at the top it's because i was uh mi mist sized uh, yeah, so sorry about that. You didn't actually get to me to see do anything. What happens next is, well, when they get past this, they should be heading off uh, along the road towards um, Lake Baratok, where they will encounter the uh, abandoned wagon um, that belongs to um, um, Esmeralda. Esmeralda's abandoned wagon, the monster hunter Esmeralda, and then the actual tower itself. So I have created the Lake Baratok um, where they'll meet the um, the wagons and then obviously then we'll have the tower encounter. So those two we're going to do in the next video and we should actually do some building for that. Um, so thank you for watching. Do appreciate it. Sorry it's a little bit of a weird one but I didn't want to skip on and then not tell you what I've done. Um, but in the next one I promise I will do better to make sure you can actually watch me do it for those people who enjoy watching the building process. Take care everybody. I'll see you in the next one.